Howdy everybody, how are you today? I'm Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist, Bob Langston with the North Carolina Zoo. Thank you once again for inviting me in to spend a little time with you today. Uh, last week I was talking a little bit about some of these really odd worms that you can find if you look for them. And today we're not gonna, you know, go too far away from that. We're gonna look at something that some people find icky, maybe even a little bit gross, creepy, crawly, and stuff like that. Now, uh, I will say this, as a student of natural history, you can't just look at the nature and the animals that are warm, fuzzy, cuddly, and stuff like that. All animals are fair game for study, and some of them really can be quite interesting. So today, I'm going to uncover a rock or two, and we're going to actually take a look at something that you know as a garden slug. They actually have a name, they're called leopard slugs. So. Let's take a look and see what kinds of stuff slugs are all about. Come on. This kind of green and black glob right here probably doesn't look like an awful lot. This is a critter that has a tendency to sort of squinch up and scrunch up into a little ball when it feels threatened. Let me give this one a minute or two, because I just picked this one up over here in the yard. As you watch, you'll see him kind of come out of this glob and unwind a little bit and stretch out. And there we go. This uh, is uh, what's called the leopard slug, sometimes just called a garden slug. Uh, they're really common. They're originally from uh, Europe. Um, pretty much found all over the world now. They got exported, their eggs and the juveniles, in uh, various potted plants. As uh, plant trade went around, they can be hitchhikers and other things as well. So, yeah, here we have yet another alien species. They um, live around here and uh, eat a lot of plant matter. They're originally detritivores. I'll tell you what that means in a little bit. Their scientific name is Limax maximus. Sort of sounds like it ought to be a great big green popsicle, but nope, that's what they're called. And that's the leopard slug. Slugs are a little bit misunderstood by some folks. Now, they aren't bugs and they aren't worms. They're actually gastropod mollusks. Gastropod means uh, stomach, foot, so they crawl around on their belly. Their uh, close relatives on the planet are things like snails and conchs. There are gastropod mollusks that can be found in the ocean, uh, things like uh, big horse conchs and things like that. There are gastropod mollusks that can be found in ponds, and there are also terrestrial ones. These guys have lungs, and I'll show you where they breathe in a moment, but the uh, ones in the ocean have to use siphons to draw water in and over their gills. These guys don't have gills. Very stretched out, and you can see that foot. I'm going to roll this over so you can see the belly pretty muscular. It does generate a mucus. Uh, we know about slug trails and stuff like that, but that large muscular foot also creates waves with the muscle tissue, and that's kind of how they move forward. I mentioned that slugs are related to snails, and they kind of look like a snail that's out of its shell, but they actually do have a shell. Uh, these guys, the leopard slugs, their shell is really, really tiny, and it's actually inside their body. As this one crawls around in my glass bowl, you'll notice they have four tentacles. The two longer ones are eye stalks, and they're not really eyes. They can actually detect light and dark, and that's what those are used for. The shorter ones are actually uh, sensory organs, and that's how they uh, can find food. Using my pen here, I'm not only pointing out the uh, uh, two sets of tentacles here, but also this opening right here. This is what's called a pneumostome. And for gastropod mollusks that live on the land, they don't have gills, they have a single lung. This is how oxygen gets into their body so they can breathe. As I flip over a glass bowl, you can see that the slug can actually cling to that glass. Two things help it do that. Uh, that muscular foot, that lighter thing you see there, uh, that can help them as long as they can secrete this thin mucus. Now, a slug can secrete a couple of different kinds of mucus, and they use it for different purposes. It can be thinner, it can be thicker. But the muscles create a ripple, 
and uh, that helps them move along in this thin mucus uh, film that they uh, secrete and they, they produce. Now, as this one tops the rim of the bowl, you can see right behind the eye stalks, that uh, uh, front pair of tentacles, there's a thicker membrane, and this is called uh, the shield, and that's what helps protect their vital organs. Leopard slugs like this one aren't particularly fast. They can use that foot and their uh, mucus trails to move at a blistering pace of about six inches every minute. Not super fast, but they, they, they get along. I want to point out here once again the pneumostome. This is the uh, opening. It's a part of the shield where they actually take in oxygen. The slugs only have one lung. Many animals in nature have what are called bilateral symmetry. Humans, we have a left and a right side. We have two arms, two lungs, two eyes, two ears. So many of our organs are paired up, and slugs aren't uh, organized that way. They pretty much have a straightforward, no-nonsense system. Many folks uh, consider slugs to be agricultural and garden pests. Their tongue is called a radula, and it works a bit like a saw. They can get up and lick and destroy and, and cut open and eat the various parts of leaves. I had a hibiscus out on my front porch. And they ate so much of the soft tissue of the leaves, the plant itself couldn't conduct photosynthesis and uh, stay alive. In general, though, they're what are called detritivores. And detritus is uh, sort of a, a mashed up litter of leaf material and stuff. And they grind that up to help cycle nutrients in the soil. Once again, we can see our leopard slug here crawling along on the glass bowl. It's using that muscular foot and the thinner uh, mucus that it sort of produces to stick to the bowl. And sometimes that mucus and the slug trails and stuff like that, and because they're often seen as being garden pests, they're kind of icky. People don't necessarily look at slugs as being interesting, but they can be quite interesting. We know that slugs, like our leopard slug here, typically tend to be more active at night. You would say that they're nocturnal. And we often thought in the past that slugs were light sensitive, that when it would start getting dark, they'd become active. When it started getting light, they would head underneath a flower pot or a brush pile or something for uh, some place to hide. That's not necessarily the case anymore. We actually believe now that leopard slugs like this have the ability to detect temperature changes. So when the daytime temperatures start to cool off, they'll get active and start feeding. And then when it starts to warm up a little bit as the daytime temperatures come in, they'll head uh, into their safety places. Now, if you're looking for a little bit of a, kind of a point of comparison here, I'm going to stick my left index finger out here, since this one's kind of stretched out along the rim of the bowl, and you can get an idea for how large this one is. When it's fully extended, I say he, uh, when it's fully extended, they can be, oh, six, seven inches long for a fully grown one. They can live to two and a half to three years. Beyond the ability to detect temperature changes and light changes, another thing that makes slugs rather interesting is laboratory experiments have indicated that some of these gastropod mollusks actually have the ability to learn different behaviors, which may change the way we think about certain invertebrates moving on into the future. Well, I can't necessarily promise you that next week we'll be back with Bob's Performing Slug Circus or anything like that, but these are some really interesting creatures from having a tongue that works like a saw that can pick out leaves and break up leaf litter to actually taking the leaf detritus, the litter, and turning it into nutrients that can be used by other plants, or if it's that wonderful, interesting single lung breathing apparatus, that's it. But imagine that, an invertebrate, an animal that doesn't have a backbone, being able to be trained to do certain behaviors. 
Slugs are actually pretty cool. And by the way, if you think they're icky and yucky, take a look at the University of, Sa of California in Santa Cruz. Their mascot is the banana slug, a big yellow slug found on the west coast of the United States. Slugs can be cool. Carry it with you, friends. Again, about the North Carolina Zoo, we have been relaxing our cap on the number of visitors that are coming into the park pretty much every week now since the middle of summer. And uh, we've, uh, uh, we still do ask that people buy their tickets in advance and make a reservation time to come into the park, but we welcome you to come visit us. So please go online at www.nczoo.org. You can find out how to buy your tickets. You can find out how to reserve your entry time. You can find out how many people can come in on any given day. Weekends are starting to cool off a little bit. Cooler temperatures in the fall are absolutely wonderful times to come and visit with us at the North Carolina Zoo. We have 500 acres that you can wander. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,700 animals. You may not necessarily see them all because some are small insects and fish and various other things. The big ones, they're looking for you and love it when you can come and visit with us. So please plan ahead and come on and visit with the North Carolina Zoo at some point this fall. For the North Carolina Zoo, I'm Bob Langston. Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist, please. Let me see you again, and in the meantime, you guys take care of yourselves. Bye now.